What's the latest with that? Well, at the moment, we haven't even uh, had a final decision on, on who the judge will be. We have not yet made our arguments on the constitutional grounds, uh, which uh, Mr. Duncan and Mr. Lynch uh, have been working on for quite some time. Uh, things move slowly. COVID has not helped because the court system is jammed. And, uh, and so we don't know. We don't know how long it's going to take, but it has taken longer than most people expected. I'm hearing reports that there may be some question as to which judge presides over this case. Yes. Is that the case? Yes. We, we, have, we have submitted arguments asking for the recusal of the judge. And that based is based on what grounds? Uh, based on uh, the appearance of bias. Okay. So. You stepped down officially in politics in 2010. Uh, since then, you've moved on to a degree with your life. But that would be a very interesting time for the PLP. It was prior to the reign of Paula Cox, who, for the life of me, would not call a snap election when the United Bermuda Party fell apart. In hindsight, do you think she knows or the party knows that was a grave error? Well, I've never discussed uh, that with her, and I don't know how what, what her, her conclusion is about that. But uh, I support the position that uh, a snap election would have uh, uh, been the appropriate thing to do, but it wasn't my call. Uh, uh, the premier at the time made the call, and uh, the rest is history. Now, based on that history, uh, it was your watch where terms became popular like pay to play, friends and family. Oh, Dr. Braun's giving out contracts and he gets kickbacks. Now, what can you speak to that? Well, you know, I think part of that is, is, is a comical situation. Bermuda has a storied history of family and friends, a storied history of kickbacks uh, to uh, government officials, et cetera. And uh, so the, these people were familiar with the terms. That's why they could so easily apply them to me. Uh, they, that's the way they had done business for years. And that is probably the way many of them continue to do business. Uh, so, you know, I wasn't surprised. Uh, uh, I think it was Grant Gibbons who came up with the pay to play allegation and that was their that was their plan from the beginning to find something something to to stick on me because they didn't like my core politics my central politics my counter racist politics they didn't like that and so they said there must be something there must be some steps we can take to uh, assassinate uh his character uh to make life more difficult, and they have come from all different angles. Uh, but so far, here we are. What would you say about the talk regarding your affiliation or friendship with Michael Mizzick, who's still facing charges? Michael Mizzick is a friend of mine. Uh, and as, as Nelson Mandela told the journalist, uh, it would be improper for my enemies to choose my friends. Now, Dr. Braun, on your watch, the salaries of cabinet ministers was increased, correct? I think there was a, a minimal increase, although we didn't uh, get the increase that I thought should have been in place. Now, we've never had a majority of 30 to 6, but there's quite a bit of disenchantment in in the local community. When you beat the pavement, you hear things like the PLP, this administration in particular, are all about themselves. That's all about their paycheck to hell with everybody else. What do you say to that? Because that sentiment in hard times is running hard right now. Yes, I, I have been hearing that kind of thing. But I will tell you this, to govern is difficult. And in these times, you will hardly find an incumbent government that is not under, under increased stress. And COVID, of course, has added to that. Um, I don't have the solution 
and I don't know that much about the the, uh, the situation involving the cabinet and, and ministers individually, but I will say that Bermuda owes itself uh, some work in in drawing and attracting uh, 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 appropriate and and um, effective uh, ministerial talent. Well, let's talk current. I've, I'm sure you've heard about this senator who was recently in court for not paying his rent for whatever reason. The landlady is a senior citizen. There's a big outcry for Premier Brett to get rid of this guy. It's not a good look. How do you how do you feel about it? Well, it's not a good look, you know, and there will be more uh, uh, instances where cabinet ministers and members of parliament will have uh, uh, situations involving their personal conduct. Uh, it's the it's the premier's call. If the premier thinks that the senator cannot do his work appropriately as a result of this, then he has to do what he has to do. But that's his call, and and surely it is not mine. Most people were surprised that you could be a senator and on financial assistance. You I, you have I, any views on that? No, I, I didn't know uh, about that specific have, situation. Have you heard that there are reports, I think they were put out by TNN initially, that mm -hmm. Premier Brett asked his cabinet MPs to sign a gag order, i.e. no one speaks to the media without his express permission or they face the possibility of losing their cabinet, their cabinet appointment. Has yeah. that ever happened? In no, your no. Uh, the closest thing to that in my administration was when a member of the cabinet uh, asked for support, indications of support during the Uyghur situation. And he, he uh, circulated that to cabinet ministers. I never instructed that to happen. But, you know, again, uh, when you make those decisions, uh, you have to stand by them and handle the consequences. But I think the problem within the electorate comes with the backbenchers. I'm not sure if that gag order applies to them, but cabinet ministers serve at the behest of the premier, right? What is stopping the backbench? Because these guys are silent. They weren't silent on your watch. No, uh, not maybe at all. David Brad is more intimidating than you. I don't know. I, it's, I wasn't intimidating at all, Sierra. <laughs> Uh, the, the thing is that um, I don't know what is what with respect to the current backbench, but it, it is healthy for backbenchers to speak up, and I encouraged it. A lot of people suggest that it's the money factor. Maybe they're quiet because they're hoping those six-digit guys will fall from grace and maybe they'll get a slut. It's this whole money thing. You know, I've heard people say that you have a house of parliament with a government side that's filled with people who otherwise wouldn't have a job in the private sector. I mean, some of them work um, in the private sector, but quite a few of them don't. So to the young voter today who says politicians are all about the money, what do you say? Because I see that tide changing. I mean, recall we had almost 40% of the electorate who said to hat with both parties. I see that number growing. You say? I wouldn't be surprised if it is growing, if people become disenchanted, disillusioned with politics. Um, that happens. Again, it depends on positions taken, directions taken by the leadership. And uh, the selection of cabinet ministers, as you said earlier, is directly the responsibility of the premier. And he knows his team better than I do. Do you think this government is burning some bridges that won't be replaced? I don't know the story intimately enough. Uh, I, I have heard uh, comments and, and uh, about people being disenchanted and I'm sure that the leadership has heard the same thing. If I can sit where I am and hear, hear it, uh, then I would assume that it's being heard by the leadership. And what you have to do in, in politics is when you hear reports, you have to respond. 
uh, maybe not publicly all the time, but you do have to make uh, changes, adjustments in order to keep things afloat. And I have confidence that the Progressive Labour Party, despite the, 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 the current conversation, can recover. No, you mentioned the Uyghurs earlier. Mm -hmm. That too is a major thorn in people's sides. They insist that Dr. Ewa Braun had to receive something for flying those Uyghurs into Bermuda. Ask years <laughs> later, you say. They are absolutely right. I did receive something. I received grief for <laughs> 10 years of after doing something that I thought was most Bermudian uh, to be hospitable and receptive to people who had been jailed without charges for seven to eight years. Uh, I think as we look now, uh, 12 years, 13 years later, it's clear that it was the correct decision. Uh, some people may argue with the way in which it was carried out, and I'll accept the responsibility for that. But there's no question that we did what should have been done for the Uyghurs. Now, that was way back in 2009. Yeah. Do you regret that you made that deal secretly? No. Why not? Because cabinet is a leaky ship. As, you, as a journalist, you know that. And the United States had asked that it be treated in a classified manner. And I acceded to their request. Why Colonel Birch, though? Why was he the one to fly them in? because he was the minister responsible for immigration. Now, you would know more than some that this year, the delegates conference leaves way for a challenge. Mm -hmm. You know, you're a guy who challenged before at a time, at one point you said you wasn't and you did. Um, you see David Bart being challenged this year? Let's, let's clear up the history first. Uh, I never said that I would not challenge. At a particular time, I might have been unready to challenge, but it was known to all of Bermuda and, and everyone else that I eventually wanted to do that. I don't think anyone was surprised that I did that. That statement you made, we had to deceive you. What was that about? Again, incorrect. Still wrong choice of words. We said we, I said we had to mislead you. That was in a poor choice of words. And I have since uh, expressed my regret concerning those words. What I meant was that we could not come out with full disclosure on what was happening uh, behind the scenes. And, and that was accurate. Two protégés come to mind, Mark Bean and David Burke, mm -hmm. both on your watch. Mr. Bean is not in politics from as far as I can tell right now. David Burt is now walking in your shoes. He's a premier. He's also the minister of tourism. You both have Jamaica links. And I only say that to say that when I look at the international news, I see Jamaica booming. I see flights going in like their airport is full. We have a massive airport that is empty after one o'clock until British Airways comes in. Uh, clearly, our to tourism is not doing as well as other areas. And I would have thought we would look more to some of what Jamaica's doing, you know, in present times. What's your views on that? Well, I have a number of views. The first one is that I acknowledge that tourism uh, for Bermuda is un under stress, not doing well. I also recognize that these things go in cycles. There was a time when Jamaica used to look to us, when everybody in the Caribbean looked to Bermuda uh, to lead the way, so to speak, in, in tourism strategies. Uh, over time, that has changed. Uh, Turks and Caicos is a very, very popular destination at the moment, regardless of COVID. Uh, that is just the nature of the beast at the moment. I do believe, though, that Bermuda has to question itself in the long run as to whether tourism and international business are in fact capable of existing at the same time, both of them being successful. What would help us immediately in your view? 
in terms of air arrivals because our beds have been empty with no hairs for a long time. We also have a minister and a Bermuda Tourism Authority. I'm not really sure what's what. Your views? Well, you know, it is a most difficult job, I can tell you, to get pe people to come to Bermuda in the first three months of any year. Uh, I remember that when we looked at it uh, back then, we said, you know, we'll have to find things that attract people when the weather does not. And so we came up with the Love Festival, which was beginning to grow, but which was uh, terminated by my successor. Um, we had golf tournaments, you know, we had triathlons. Uh, we were trying to at least uh, stop the hemorrhaging, so to speak, uh, during those months, the first three months of the year. Uh, when Global U was there, I think that we were more in tune with the target population in the United States. And we did not um, make the assumption that Bermuda was so desirable that we didn't have to work and, 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 and generate business within the U.S. We're still trying. We're still trying in different ways. But I believe that, uh, that there has to be an overhaul of the entire approach to tourism. I, I think the old model uh, has reached its, uh, has finished its shelf life, so to speak. And we have to come up with something totally different. And Do you see that happening? Because I still strongly believe that Bermuda's for the newlyweds and the nearly dead. We have no nightlife. What do you do at dark 33? Well, let me tell you something. I remember a, a cabinet minister in the PLP making that statement many years ago. And as a result of that, we did things to liven dockyard. You remember when dockyard did look like a graveyard, and uh, especially in the evenings. And over time, with the construction of the, of the Heritage Wharf and, and the uh, uh, introduction of new businesses in Dockyard, that's a different place now. It's not the place that we'd like it to be, but it's different. Uh, and it's just going to take work, Ciola. Uh, I'm not convinced that Bermuda benefits from its most uh, intelligent and brilliant people. I think our, the, the, a lot of the bright people in Bermuda sit on the sidelines and snipe. They shoot at the government, no matter which government it is. We don't have enough people, bright people, I think, participating in the actual delivery of goods and services to the people. And I wish, and I put this out as a call, you know, some of you brilliant people or those of you who consider yourselves brilliant, come forward you know, and help your country and stop criticizing uh, and, and, and be constructive. It's time for that. Things can get worse. Things can get worse in Bermuda. And uh, people need to understand that it's not automatic that you're going to do well. And so uh, you mentioned nightlife for tourism. Let me tell you something. There is no nightlife in Turks and Caicos. So what do they do? Nothing. <laughs> but it's a wonderful place to do nothing. That's the whole point. What do they have? They have the best beaches in the world. They have great restaurants. And they have friendly people. That's but do they, do they have hotels that cost four and five hundred dollars a night? More than that. Really? More than that. That's what I'm saying. Some of the things that we think are problems are not problems for other people. Okay, basic things. If I go to a certain beach and I want to buy a beer. Yes, at now the there you bar, go. Now, you know, I can't do that. Okay, there you Why? go. Now, now you're coming into what I used to call the Bermuda factor, okay, which is we want to grow. We want to be at the top of the heap, but we don't want to change. We don't want to, to do anything, as Jesse Jackson used to say, you know, you want us to be a show horse and a mule. You know, make up your mind. If you want to be a show horse, then you got to decorate your horse. You know, this idea of not having drinks on the beach, it is totally ridiculous. It is absurd that it has taken Bermuda so long. And I remember proposals long before I was in government proposals designed to liven up the experience on the beach in Bermuda. And it was always opposed. I don't know what it is, Ciola. 
If you came up tonight with a cure for cancer in Bermuda, I wouldn't be surprised if there was a committee against it in the morning. So we're just going to keep going around and around because this whole yes. Bermuda Tourism Authority came, I believe, on David Dunfell's watch, mm -hmm. right? Who yes. promised within X number of years they will be funding them, themselves based on this. It never happened. So now we have a BTA and a tourism ministry, and both of them look like a bunch of deadheads in terms of visitor numbers. What? Why do we stay on this treadmill? Because we believe that a new structure will solve the old problem. Structures don't solve problems. Buildings don't solve problems. People solve problems. And that's what we're lacking in Bermuda. I don't see enough energetic, uh, innovative people input. And when it does come often, it's discouraged. It's disc I don't know what it is. I have thought about it. I have prayed about it. I don't know where the toxicity comes from. I have a feeling that it is based in race because we will not confront that issue. And therefore everything else is like building a house on sand. So it's all about the tourism part uh, uh, of profitability for a certain persuasion and nothing for the others because you have a government right now who says they're into empowering entrepreneurs and you go to government and hit brick walls before you even get through the door and well, then it's about whether you're in that clique or if you fit this thing you know you know how it goes i understand i understand which is why friends and family is so popular yeah yeah well we're all friends and we're all family that's what people don't understand. In Bermuda, if someone is not friend or family, who are they? Only one category is left is enemy. So when you say things could get worse, paint that picture for me. Because economically, people are still struggling. The country's saying we can't pay if we we can't repave roads because you know money's tight. Never mind where you're gonna get the asphalt. But paint that picture for me. Well, I, I don't want to be the messenger of doom and gloom, but I do think that if we're going to take a realistic look at the potential future of Bermuda, we have to look at the downside. The downside could, we could continue to lose flights, for example. And when that happens, then the dominoes begin to fall. Hoteliers will tell you, I cannot possibly continue. Uh, we've had Southampton Princess closed for a long, long time, and it doesn't seem to, to have made a difference. There's no demand for it. So, so that could happen. People could be, there could be more and more unemployment. That's a reality. Bermudians have to understand that, yes, Bermuda is another world, but Bermuda also suffers the pain of the world. And we're not excluded from that. You know, if people are not working and not generating income, crime will increase. That will make the place less desirable uh, and on and on. And so right now is the time. Let's not wait. Let's not wait until it is really out of control. So what's it going to take though, with these guys? Because everybody's looking fat and comfortable to me. Well, I don't, I don't know how people are looking, but I'll tell you what, it, the, the responsibility uh, is the government in some areas, but all of the responsibility is not the government. We need to stop trying to block people from being entrepreneurs, for example. In Bermuda, often when a proposal's on the table, nobody does anything because they're tracing where the money will go. And that argument takes five years. We've got to get out of that habit. It's time to just do things and move forward. I mean, if you look at what's happening in Barbados uh, and, and now about to happen in Jamaica, you will see that other people are not waiting for us. They're not waiting for us. And we're getting further and further behind. And we're relying. I don't, I don't see the urgency, though, in our leadership. Well, they will. It'll come. I've had patients who didn't see the urgency either until things got out of control. Hmm. It's not a problem until the massive heart attack strikes. Huh? That's right. Until then, just eat more mayonnaise.
Oh, helmets. Make sure it's helmets. <laughs> Listen, you mentioned something earlier. I said I wanted to ask you. The perception is, and I don't know what you said initially, but mm -hmm. when you came out in support of the vaccination, I got heavy criticism from the public. Well, that's not what he said in the beginning. The perception is you were against the vaccination, and now you're all for it. What exactly is your position? And I, I'm guessing you'll agree that physicians do get paid to push the jail, yes? Let, let me say this. First of all, another perception. I don't know where these things come from. I was never opposed to the vaccine. I, I have questioned a number of medical treatments over the years. I have also told people to look into things without being uh, just following instructions automatically. There's nothing wrong with that. I was never opposed to the vaccine uh, for COVID. I, I was never opposed to it. And Care I to say whether or not you're vaccinated? Of course, I'll tell you. I'm vaccinated. I don't urge people to do something that I wouldn't do. Vaccinated and boosted and everything else. No side effects? None no that I know side. of. None that I own. I still remember you. <laughs> I'm sure you like to forget me sometimes, too. <laughs> I was asked to ask you, as an outgoing premier, uh, did well in politics, did well as a physician, what's the one thing you feel that you did for the betterment of your country directly as it relates to black people? Because I keep hearing people say life got worse in particular under this PLP administration. What would you say your number one accomplishment was you know apart from the pay to play and all the stuff you yeah, hear yeah I'm, I'm not even thinking about that um i would i would think and, and this is for other people to determine you know all i did was work and i'll leave the legacy bit up to others uh, i think that in my mind the most important thing was the the um support and encouragement of young black people uh to follow their dreams uh, to work hard. Uh, mirrors was a reflection of that. Uh, all trying to improve uh, the black people's participation in the economy of Bermuda, which is decidedly one-sided. And, uh, and so trying to fight that and trying to establish uh, conversations about racism. Uh, but even there, you know, we had minimal success that you could measure uh, because there's resistance. We're still not there yet. No, well, we're not there. And there are countries all over the world where people have decided not to try to go there. That if there's a perception that, and, and first of all, would you be surprised to hear that there's a petition due to be released this coming week calling for the powers that be to just drop this whole corruption case? that it's time to move on to end the money spending. We're talking up to $12 million for something that has yet to be brought before the courts. Would you be surprised to hear that in your reaction? Well, I'm not surprised. In fact, I'm pleased uh, when I heard about it uh, last week. Uh, I'm pleased that, that somebody wants to get on track and get Bermuda on track and get rid of all this waste that's been going on. Uh, the they don't seem the governor has the responsibility, and I, I want to be clear on this. I don't know whether Bermudians understand that the governor appoints the chief justice, he appoints the DPP, and he appoints the po the police commissioner. All of those people report to the governor, and yet the governor who was offended by some of my remarks in 2007 and eight uh, chose to begin this craziness in trying to politically and personally uh, assassinate my character. Uh, and, and, and then uh, we find ourselves where the, the governor actually had monthly meetings of all these people who report to him about the investigation. I mean, that, that is unheard of. But yet something comes up, 
calling for the investigation of a police commissioner, and that gets taken off the table almost immediately. So I understand, and, and I'm not complaining about what it is because I see what it is and I know what it is, and there's no sense in expressing shock and, dis and, and surprise. Speaking of the police commissioner, you would know that we just had the abrupt resignation of Stephen Corbishley. Um, there are three black Bermudians in line who are fully qualified for that position. Months later, still no appointment, while crime and murders and serious crime continues. You surprised by the length of time? And speculation is that the length of time is taken indicates that they're looking to bring in another foreign commissioner. You say? I say sickening and sad. You know, uh, 2022, and we don't have a Bermudian police commissioner. We had Bermudian police commissioners back in the 80s. So what's this new thing about Bermudian suddenly not being qualified? You know, it's not. Bermudians need to wake up and smell the roses and see what is happening. There is a direct effort to control certain aspects of Bermudian life. And they're going to do it because it's consistent with their ultimate desires. There are those who would say in that regard, nothing's changed in Bermuda. And that's in spite of both administrations. Well, I wouldn't say nothing has changed. But people are wearing different hats and people are, are using different approaches. Uh, but the end result is the same. We are still a colony in 2022. We are a colony and we can dress it up all we want and call ourselves an overseas territory. But that's just spraying cologne on manure. You know, it is just, it's the same thing. And it's time for us to wake up. Barbados is trying to teach us the truth about our predicament, and we can't ignore it. We cannot ignore it any further. It's time to look at that and decide that we don't want that anymore. But where's the leadership? I'm not even sure independence is an issue for this current PLP government. I don't know. I, I don't know where that issue sits on the list of priorities. But I'll tell you that as a country, Bermuda cannot continue to be a colony and succeed. We'll be right back after these messages. Stay tuned. Crimson Multimedia is a full service video production company. We can take your next project from concept to completion. We produce small one camera setups to complex large scale multi-camera productions. We offer editing, visual effects, and file transfers. We also broadcast and live stream both free and pay-per-view events. Visit our website at www.crimsonmultimedia.bm for a quote or to contact us. Lit Crimson Multimedia. Film, edit, broadcast and stream your next event. Real news. Real issues. Real events. It's Ciola Wilson. One on one. You're watching Bermuda Real. We've approached the halfway point or just over. I was surprised in reading your bio. You were quite the athlete back in the day. Uh, long distance running and so forth. And kind of made me wonder why you always support them zebras and not people <laughs> like Somerset Trojan. So uh, you donated money over the years consistently, but why? PHC. I have a problem with that, but that's a personal that's okay. issue. That's okay. Let, let me say, we won't be tribal about this. <laughs> uh, we, we, when I was the MP for Warwick, that is the location of PHC. Not to mention my father's involvement with PHC over the years and what have you. So uh, it was a natural, and we started supporting that way back 12, 13 years ago. And it's, it's a pleasure for us to support their program. I wish we could donate more, but we have to save some for the lawyers. And so we do what we can do with PHC and we're very proud of the relationship, proud of the work that they do with the young people. Because you know what? For every young person that goes astray, uh, there's a counter effort by 
certain people in our community who have not given up. So talking about support, quite a few people were bent out of shape and they still say, well, they gave Dr. Braun's medical practice all that money and they, you know, what's the situation with that from your point of view? Because there's a lot of misconceptions when it comes to things regarding you. Yes, yes. And I wish things could be clearer. They would be clear if my detractors would simply deal with the facts. But you remember, I left a very bitter taste in the mouths of racists in Bermuda. And there are many, many racists active and alive in Bermuda. And so they continue. And I expect that when I'm gone from this earth, they will still be stomping on my grave, you know, to make sure that I'm really there. You know, the point is that with respect to that payment, uh, you might recall that when Trevor Monis was the Minister of Health, uh, he took steps at the last official act of the OBA in Parliament was to severely slash the payments made to Bermuda Healthcare and Brown Darrell. You got a whole medical system that's spending $700 million and he chose to make legislation that would slash the fees paid to us for imaging. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, yes, part of it, of course, of course. He knows my agenda and I know his, so we can't say that we're surprised. So no other imaging places were slashed? The hospital was going to be affected by it because he couldn't make it seem like it was just us. But then it became impossible for the hospital to continue without correcting that. Well, didn't they at one point try to say that the hospital is the only place you could go for? Yes, yes they, they tried well, that. how dumb was that? The hospital can't handle what they have on most days. Well, we, you and I know that, but they, the government decided, the, the new PLP government in 2012, 2013, tried to compensate for this rash and and, and irrational uh, government uh, 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 move by the OBA. And, um, and so some of the fees that would have been in place were restored. That's all that was. There was no new money in it at all. That's what happened. And now since then, there's another organization that is planning to, uh, to um, open an imaging center uh, as we speak. Yeah. So what was the evil in what we were doing? And if we were too much, then what is this? You know, so we are, we understand what is going on, but I, I, I think most Bermudians will understand that there was no gift made to me, that there was an attempt to restore uh, a company that had been providing a service to Bermudians for many, many years. And that's what, we, that's what the government did. When it comes to economic disparity, though, we've been talking about it for years, but technically no administration has ever dealt with it on a level, you know. I would say the correct statement would be no administration has succeeded in fu any fundamental shift. And the, why is that in your view? Because it runs deep and long and strong. And when you try but now, to- But now it's headed up by this perceivably young administration. A lot yeah. of them went to those elitist schools. There are some grassroots Bermudians who feel some of that Salter's crew and, and the other private school crew, when it came to the education and enlightenment of blacks, produced a lot of twisted black people. Well, you know, I, I'm i trying to stay away from the... Uh, I didn't know you was a Barclay ID, though. By no, then. I went to Barclay for one term. So that means technically I never, not a Barclay. I left it. Yeah, I, I call my, I'll call, let them call me, whatever they want to call me. I went to Barclay for a, a term, and I went to technical for a, a year or, or about a year and a half. So, yeah. But, but let me say this, that it, it, clearly it doesn't matter where you went to school, if 
all of the people who have tried to alter the economy of Bermuda have not been successful. And when we, we come forward with proposals, there are people who believe that it's just too disruptive. When I say that there should be a Bermuda People's Corporation as part owner of every casino, there are Bermudians who think that that's not, that's not correct, it's not good. That's what you do, that's what we have to do to shift the economy. And one of the things we did was to try to contract with the government contracting with black Bermudians in areas where there had been no uh, contractual relationship in the past. And so there were hundreds of, of contracts that were uh, uh, awarded to black Bermudians uh, during our administration. Outside of politics, do you have a life these days? What you up to? <laughs> of course I have a life. I'm determined to have a life. Uh, I, I was rewarded with a new grandson uh, wow. on December 28th. Uh, his name is Nolan, and he is in California. I'm trying to get out to see him uh, and, and to meet him and hold him. Uh, so, yes, life goes on. I just finished spending a week uh, with my sister. Uh, we talk a lot, but because she lives in California, uh, we don't get to see each other that much. So, yeah, we, I have a life, very much so. So what's next for you moving forward? How's your sons doing? Those people say, well, you know, he had two sons in jail. And Absolutely had two sons in prison. Uh, one, uh, both of them are now have been released. They're doing well. And uh, it seems like there are increasing numbers of of black families affected by that. So we have to keep on keeping on. We can't give up because that happened. And so they're both doing well. And the other two are doing very well, uh, Trey and Donovan, um, and they're, they're doing well. So uh, I'm, I feel that it's it's been a good ride. You miss practicing? Practicing medicine? Mm -hmm. You know, I don't miss the day to day but I do miss the people contact. Mm -hmm. I do. I love that, you know, but I still get calls from people asking for advice and what have you. And, and, and I keep, you know, keep my brain active in that. I, I didn't get too deeply involved in the vaccine fights that were going on, although I did express my opinion in a public statement urging people to take the vaccine. Um, but no, I, I don't do much. I, I comment when I'm asked to, to do so. But I don't see you in the paper. You don't talk to the paper? Uh, I, I take it you mean the Royal Gazette. Yes, that um, paper. Yes, I, I do talk to the Royal Gazette on occasion. But if you, if you know and understand the history between me and the Royal Gazette, you can understand. So for the young people and senior citizens out here struggling who say that you politicians are all about the money, all about yourselves, all about hooking up your friends and family. What's in it for politics? You know, I, I get a, a feeling there's a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths about what's happening, what's not happening in terms of political progress in this country. What would you say to those people? Because a growing number of seniors have told me, I live with two seniors who said, that's it, to hell with all of you. I really see that number of people who didn't vote at all growing. You say? I, 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 I'm disturbed by that because there is no other system in place. And so we work with the system that is there. And if the politicians fail to excite the people and fail to satisfy some of the desires of the people, uh, then they will pay the price. Well, their silence is deafening. Yeah. Well, you know, politics is not a silence game. And so the politicians will speak up. I hope that the politicians will shift into another gear uh, in, in this new year and show us that the time that has passed where they've been uh, passive or quiet uh, is, has ended and that now they're going to shake the tree, that they're going to do things that, that show Bermudians that they deserve to be in place. And I think that they're going to do that. Okay. 
Well, I look forward to hearing from you again. Uh, be watching this case closely. I'm not sure when something will move, if it will ever move, but I want to thank you for stepping up to the plate. I'm sure I forgot something. I'll talk to you about that later. But in closing, is there anything else you want to say? Well, just to thank you for having me and giving me this opportunity to uh, say a few things. Uh, with respect to your last comment about the uh, legal matters, I believe that it will be settled. I promised in the beginning that I would use every single cent and fight it to my last breath. And that is, is it going to take all your cents? Because some well, people say this is, it's going to break you financially. Yes, yes. But I haven't succeeded yet. Uh, but um, that could be their intention. But that's better than some of the other alternatives that they could have in mind. In closing. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I want Bermudians to know that uh, I will be there uh, with you shortly. Thank you, Dr. Brown, for joining Thank you. Us. Take care. Are you looking for an event coordinator or filming crew for a live television broadcast? Search no more. Gino Crimson is at your service, specializing in international 3D graphics, event creative, and technical direction. We offer a product second to none. A combination of two well-known production companies, Gino Group and Crimson Multimedia, together bring more than 20 years of experience in production of local and international ad campaigns and television broadcast programming. Specializing in national sporting events, Gino Crimson is also known for the full production of the annual sports awards, Kappa Classics Live, live pay-per-view boxing events, the general and municipal elections, the tea talk show, cut match classic, and much more. Providing the best of the island's skilled production crew, we organize an amazing network of camera operators, directors, vision mixers, on-camera hosts, sports anchors, and beauty consultants, all while using the latest in production equipment for a high-quality live television broadcast. Gino Crimson. Our vision is to make your request a reality, and we would be happy to be a part of your next event.
Crimson Multimedia is a full-service video production company. We can take your next project from concept to completion. We produce small one-camera setups to complex large-scale multi-camera productions. We offer editing, visual effects, and file transfers. We also broadcast and live stream both free and pay-per-view events. Visit our website at www.crimsonmultimedia.bm for a quote or to contact us. Lit Crimson Multimedia. Film, edit, broadcast and stream your next event. For more than 30 years, Bermuda Healthcare Services and the Brown Darrell Clinic have provided state-of-the-art diagnostic choices to the people of Bermuda. We were the first facility outside the hospital to establish a full array of imaging services. Under the skillful supervision of Dr. Mahash Reddy, we offer CAT scanning, ultrasound, echocardiography, x-ray, and MRI scanning. Our team of highly skilled technologists hold outstanding credentials and our staff will ensure that your visit is comfortable and confidential. If you would like to experience our private care, feel free to let your doctor know. Our CT and MRI results are available from the Leahy Clinic in 24 hours or less. For more information, check our website at bhcs.bm or call us at 236-2810 building trust, one patient at a time.